fast. You just have to react. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to respect that auto attack damage. Because like I said, Kale in this current state, stacking up both of those spell and blade weavings just with the hits, it gets maxed out almost instantly there. And it's a lot of damage. So still have to be careful there for Voiboy. I think a lot of the this game is going to depend on Dominate's early jungle. We saw Zuna before had a really strong Elise early jungle, and then they, they weren't able to finish it out in the end. I think that um, if Curse is able to get that same sort of early jungle with this team, then they will actually be able to. It would be interesting if they could match something that EG did, because what that showed us when EG got those first few kills on Wiz Fusion on the team of Coast was that their mentality is locked in to win the game. They didn't get put off by that. So if Dominate can get the early ganks out, Curse is going to have to hold that lead strong because Coast can come back. Yeah, I mean, they've got a Nasus scaling amazingly well into the end game, yes. pretty almost infinitely, some would say. And then they have Jinx, who is the AD end game carry here so if they can have whiz fusion just stay calm mm -hmm. you know even if he does get a little bit behind early they have got an amazing shot you know in the end game because kale jinx nasus they even have guaranteed engage it's like a really very strong late game cop here just waiting to see the dance out it looks like we will get even lanes once again between all of the teams which means the bit slower of the game we're not going to see the junglers trying to get too much in the early part. We saw Zuna go fast bottom last game, and it was just about the same lane matchup. So we'll see if these duos draw the same attention here so in the beginning. An adaptation that we saw a lot was that the duo lanes will not help their jungler, and so the junglers were starting towards the buff that was with their solo laners, the top laners. This time around, both junglers don't... Not only do they not have help mm -hmm. from their duos, but they also don't have help from their solo top laners. They both have to solo their first buff. That's level two, early level two there. Nope, level one, just kidding. Wow, getting the ignite out as well. About 110 HP there, and Shifter shows that he yeah. is going to be in this lane for the kills right away. So that wasn't even the cues to start it off. I thought he slowed Boy Boy, but that was just the pure damage that you can see. Mm -hmm. When you activate that E, so much... So much uh, synergy comes out of there. Kale's kit is really tailored well to that offensive tree. He's able to push that lane and keep him nicely under the turret for the mid part of the game. We'll see if he gets his roam on. The bottom, Coast is also pressuring this lane. So that kind of gives uh, Dominate a lot to think about. Where's he go, mid or bot? That's interesting. You know, I, I don't see the cop duo lane really pushing a lot of lanes early. Right. Um, so I guess they don't really take that first step. But Dominate makes an early visit mid. He is going to be going for Shifter in that aggression of pushing Flashes Boy Boy back. It. Definitely got the flash out, which stops a bit of the damage, but it was directly forward. Yeah, he still got cocooned, but he didn't actually even take that much more harass for it. He's going to have to be very safe. Dominate, he'll make a return trip in just a few minutes. It's that 3.30 mark that you were talking about, Kobe. Mm -hmm. All those early wards have died out, and the junglers are starting to make moves. You could see hesitation here from Nintendo. Um, as a jungler, you're always you always want to be killing something, whether mm -hmm. it's lane minions, jungle minions, setting up for a gank. <laughs> you always need to be moving in a direction for a purpose. Uh, because this duo lane is so far back, you know, he couldn't make that gank route down the river, and he's just hard farming this out, trying to get a CS advantage on Elise. Slowly whacking away at the minions. We'll come back to Zion <laughs> later. But yeah. no, he actually isn't getting too much right now. We already have the back from Quaz up top. He feels safe in 21 to 17 in CS. So he's actually trying to push and farm that lane quite hard so they can go back and forth. Teleport on Nasus, though, so he's not going to be killing Quaz. Exactly. We'll probably come back to Zion in about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> then we'll see where he's at. Um, if he's lucky. Versus Quaz, though. Like I said, in the end game, I do like that wither attack speed slow mm -hmm. on him. Also, because in this patch, the range on it was nerfed. All right, so as we're setting up for our gank here, Boy Boy, he still has his flash and his uh, rubber ducky, though, so he has plenty of escapes. Oh, good hit up. The Counter-Strike onto Spartan. And it looks like he's just trying to pop potions as soon as they engage. Quas is farming. It's kind of... Back and forth. Yeah, here comes Nintendo though. They might be able to get the jump nice. out of Nice! Almost max uh, Vault Breaker there on the damage for Quas. He jumps it out. And you can see Spartan actually getting a level advantage here 
Nintendo's going to suck that up. So now they want to shove this wave all the way into the turret and have Zion back here because there's no ward coverage, so it's very dangerous for him to stay by himself without jungle pressure. Mm -hmm. 6.6 .6 gold across the board for both teams. Dominate looking to show a bit of pressure top lane. He does have that flash to come back in middle. That's halfway to being up for Shifter right now. And he's only seen a bit of pressure from Nintendo. Nintendo's kind of coming up stale on these ganks. Yeah, Vi pre-6, you... He's not getting the... Oh, here we go, Hook. So you can onto the Chompers. They actually get it. You got to remember that time is extended a little bit for activation, but they're still going in hard. Able to turn it around. Zekan keeping the in the bush to stay safe. Cobb turns it around. Cobb going very aggressive here, but it's a 2-1. Zion Spartan teleports into the bottom lane. Is he going to be able to get it? Oh, this suck. Gets um, it. So he flashed so close so that he could so actually close. steal that kill there and not give it to Thresh. I don't know if that was worth a summoner spell just to redirect the gold from your support to mm -hmm. your top laner, but they really do have a lot of eggs in Zion's basket here, and it looks like he's oh. rushing for cooldown. Oh, he's saying, Boy Boy, help me please put the minefield down. Everybody walks through, but he gets it over the shoulder of Boy Boy. The repel misses the Q from Shifter. That damage isn't there, but the ignite gets put on. They're all in range, and the intervention comes up right as it needs to. Yeah, really good roam there from Coast. And now they've got huge amount of pressure on the map. The jungler is gone, so all the lanes can play up. And uh, they can actually clear out the wave. That's different. We'll, we'll roam to you in mid lane this time. You don't have to roam to us. Shifter getting everything right now served to him. And it's going to be two kills coming up. Zion Spartan with one of those. Great job in the bottom lane. Throwing out the Spirit Fire, and Shifts are picking that one up. So a little bit of a lead here. Actually, they don't even have the gold lead, just the kills. Yeah, that bottom lane, they played passive until mm -hmm. the hook landed. As soon as the hook landed, Cop flipped the switch, and he went berserk. He went straight for Wizfusion. He has Lucian, the greater early game exchanging AD carry, right. just went right into his base. And because Wizfusion was trying to kill the support uh, off the hook, they come out ahead in the trade, and Cops gets the kill that allows them to come back with a BF sword. Whereas Jinx only looking for the Vamp Scepter means, you know, he's got sustain, but the all-in potential once again still in Lucian's favor. And we'll see if they actually keep doing that, because already Zekan is back for the sweeper, and he went for Sightstone, dodging the coin or anything on the way through. Yeah, he's prepping that sweeper pretty early. It's definitely going to be uh, available by the time he hits level 9. Yeah. So he's he's already looking for the vision game. Tied up pretty evenly here, though, means that um, it's going to be on the junglers for the next move. As we move closer to having uh, everybody hit level 6, the bottom lane, there's a lot of potential for some very explosive fights. I mean, Annie is going to have her Tibbers. No flash, but still, the range on Tibbers is enough to start something off if they call in jungle support. Ooh. There's an Empower slap to the face. Zion Spartan not liking that too much. The junglers just re-grabbing wow. their red buffs. A little bit more effectiveness to those ganks in lane, so we're going to see them back to business. Getting a little bit of elbow grease in on the work. Top lane still just even out between these guys. 42 to 65, well, evening out in minions, I should say. The CS. Yeah, yeah, because Zion yeah. Uh, used his teleport and had to leave lane for a while. Um, you're right. It, uh, it, that big deficit did yep. accrue for Quas, but it was because Zion was trying to make stuff happen elsewhere. And that big CS mm -hmm. difference, you know, made up for because he flashed for that kill. So he's not going to be that behind in lane. He's making it work for himself. Picks up the chain vest to start that. A there lot of aggression. Daydream and read that quite well. Was already well out of way for the Thresh Lantern. Yep, good Thresh play there. Mm -hmm. uh, positioning himself well in the lane. They do have one ward in this sneaky little bush, but that's about it. Like they don't, they won't be able to see a lane gank right. for Dominate if he decides to go down there. <laughs> Just leaving Tibbers out there as a sentry, trying to make sure. Walks it up to the tri brush, using that range effectively. And they're not going to get too much on the turret. Wiz Fusion is back already, and they're going to be good. Mm, Dominate wasting a little bit of time up top there. He tried to get in for a lane gank on the top side and was sitting in the bush for a few seconds. Mm. Nothing. Yeah, see, the, the <laughs> moves are, like I said, the, the big moves are going to come from the junglers, but since neither jungler is able to find anything with these ganks, uh, slows down the game to a little bit of a stalemate here. Meanwhile, in mid, the range uh, Voidboy has advantage over Shifter. He's just using that to try and CS because he doesn't want to get all in yeah. from this Kale. The Kale has so much burst potential. 
primary objective in mid for Void Boy is wave clear. He knows that fight is going to be quite hard unless he has Dominate's help. And already, they've had Void Boy Boy's number go in mid. They were able to get a few kills, at least on to Dominate in their last try. But now, Dragon's looking like it could be something Kobe would have very early one last time, but it's 10 minutes here. So that pink ward is finally killed that they cost him alive. And it's a five-member dragon. Even though Teleport not up for Zion, they make the call for him to roam there. Wow. And hmm. it looks like they... Let's see how much damage is on this turret here. Quas is, is doing a good job extending his CS lead every time Zion leaves, but if they're, if they're not able to answer with the turret, then it will be a slight gold lead here. And I'm pretty excited. Oh, he's going to gonna answer with it. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> excited to see what Quaz can do this game because we've seen him on a few champions here and there. His Karthus wasn't super good. The team won, but he wasn't the winning factor. So there's been a lot of hype surrounding Quaz. We'll see if he can do it on Jax this game. Well, it's a very scary champion mm -hmm. in that one versus one situation. Uh, he's doing for a few minion kills at the end. He didn't finish off the turret, but still, he's building towards um, the Blade of the Ruined King here yeah. to get the percentage health damage for taking down Nasus. He's looking at killing killing Nasus solo. Well, he's splitting the build now. He's going Trinity Force. Yep. Trinity Force and Blade of the Rune King. When he gets both <laughs> of those, that'll what? be the max he's looking for. But like I said, against Jax, you have to build hybrid defenses. You can't just build armor or just build magic resistance because he does uh, a lot of hybrid damage. Makes the lane a little difficult. You kind of want to pull your hair out when you realize it's one more than the other. Looking back in this bottom lane, as we see, the coin was picked up, or is going to be picked up. The Talisman is Ascension eventually by Z Kent. He's getting that gold regeneration in. But we still said he focused that vision, and we can see that Dominate's been down there a bit to help. You're right. The early sweeper exchange, and then also the Sightstone first mm -hmm. before picking that up. So the the next move is not gonna is not gonna be like uh, around an objective because Dragon's already down, and they're really gonna be looking again to the junglers. For the, for the moves to come in. And I would expect a lot of it to be focused bottom because that's where the most playmaking potential is with the supports. Mm -hmm. But there's so many so much ward coverage from both teams here. They both know that the other is coming in. Well, this is that last moment. A little bit of miscommunication. Dominate backed up and did not stack on the cocoon. So they don't get a kill out of that. And Tibbers is down. Top lane, Zion Spartan taking a few empowered shots after being stunned up. The leap strike and Quaz getting a few combo reels out. You leave the lane that many times, Zion. And when you come back, you're not going to like yeah, what that you CS find. Because Quaz has been now. eating his Wheaties. is going big and strong. <laughs> Very big and strong. Looks like he may be able to show us the hype this game. Looking around, junglers are actually not finished with their items just yet. Good save on Voiboy Boy there, but they've been piecing together a few other things here. Well, I don't know why uh, Nintendo keeps returning to this mid lane if he's if he's not going to go all in. They have the potential. This is a Kale lane, so if Voiboy Boy or if Nintendo wants yeah. to dive that turret, you you go with the Flash Vault Breaker and the Assault and Battery because you have the confidence that Shifter will ult you when you go under turret, but. He's not going for it. Shifter is going for the roam, though. No, Shifter's going to have to ult himself. If he can get the heal speed steroid down, it's not going to be enough. Zion of Spartan actually puts himself in a possible situation of danger here. And he looks like he'll be all right. Quad says, you're not all right there. Yeah, nothing happening mid. So Shifter makes one of his classic roam moves up to the top lane. Mm -hmm. But look at the ward coverage from Curse. They've played a much more calm game than usual. And they've got both sides warded really well here. Taking down two turrets wow. simultaneously gets them back in the lead. That's a nice chunk of gold to go in your pocket right away. Nintendo, ooh, that was just one Q from Voiboy. Boy. And there's another one almost taking him down enough to be dove here. Voiboy's Boy's ultimate is up, but it doesn't look like he's going to go too much. He actually run uh, is running Barrier as well. Knows that Kale's going to hurt. Yeah, that's mainly what you're concerned about, Ziggs. You're just trying to wave clear, and the only thing mm -hmm. that scares you is all-in kill potential. So... <laughs> You're not really wanting to be close enough to use Ignite. You just go for the defensive. It looks like he's doing that. Although it is kind of against the Voiboy Boy play style playbook. We defensive, did but he can do it. Talk about how he really has been favoring Assassins. Yeah. Um, definitely looking for the back lines here, though. He's a very versatile player. You really have to be coming into this meta. We've seen such a variety of champions coming out, and I'm sure we'll see even more this week. we got Jax coming in this game for Quas. Let's see what he can do. We've mentioned him a few times, and we will come back to him. Looking at the junglers, Nintendo and Dominate have both finished the golem item, and they look to be on their way, get back into the lanes, and start helping out. So many wards 
consumable wards being bought by Curse, though. Yeah, they're, Coaster's really just waiting. They're trying to get their late game carries to stack up here. Nasus heading for the very early Frozen Heart. Should do a lot of a lot of mitigation there for Jax as well as Lucian. But there's also a lot of magic damage on this on this curse team. So since they've decided to true. go without that tank, like we talked about, you know, no heavy tank here for Curse, there's so many damage sources that it will be even hard for Zion to survive this early in the game. They really need to get him to the late stages. And as you mentioned that magic damage, Zion Spartan finishes a frozen heart. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. All the right. uh, attack speed slow yep. is going to be great for, get for that. the dual threats, but um, all the mages on this cursed team, even support mages, are something to worry about. We'll see. 2-2 two to two in the mid lane, 16 minutes crest on the clock, and the gold still quite close between these two teams. Dominate, forcing a bit of a pressure gank in middle, and everybody starts to congregate in that area. Right, Curse need to make a move here because Coast are trying to sit on their heels, like we said, and have their Nasus and their Jinx scale up. So it's really going to be how well can Coast mm -hmm. ward their own jungle and just continue to CS while they're a little bit behind. It's up to Curse to make all the moves. So. What we do got to take is Dragon. That's neutral zone. There's not going to be any ward coverage from Coast, so easily get that money and then look to focus one of the sides. I think this is going to be it, Kobe. They're about to stare each other down. Going to be looking at the next Dragon in the game. Yeah, they burn it down so quickly. It's really hard for Coast to contest, even though they have Teleport on Zion. At this point in the game, the team fight not going to go in their favor, and the better call is just to try and trade objectives. But Zion, he still, he still has a long way to go for stacking up that Q. Um, it's not the, the giant endgame here. It's only got 216 yep. left on it. Or added to it. <laughs> left on it, and it still hurts. So the dragon taken down by Curse. Looks like they'll be able to start to control a little bit more of the map. We said the wards were coming out for them, and everything's kind of falling into order with that. Little Except for that. Little bit of map control get back for Coast. But really... He has to play still careful because red buff on Jax is going to be really painful. If Vi doesn't get there quickly, then he could go down. But he has to be very careful about baiting this. That was really nicely played by Quaz. As soon as it the wither hit, five. he closed the gap. He could have enough. The next leap strike is up. The Empower is going to come down. But it's not enough. And Zion Spartan baits it out for the kill. Good job there. Uh, Nintendo finally does make it in time. <laughs> Quaz is getting a little power hungry there didn't have the ward coverage to back up that aggression. I think that's what Coas needs to do right now. They didn't win a lot of their lanes in this situation, so they really have to play the game of tricks to get their kills right now. You can see the strength of this um, range comp here from Curse, though. Even mm -hmm. though Quas loses the duel up top, they have Ziggs and Lucian, amazing wave clear, and Elise, a range jungler. I love when you can bring another range champion from the jungle because there's very few range junglers but she helps a lot in the tower sieging game so this curse team very very strong tower sieging yep. uh, possibilities here and the hope is that they get to the point where Quas can handle his own and and actually solo that top laner i mean he could solo zion but he needs ward coverage to make sure right. that he doesn't get two versus one and as we look at shifter on kale you kind of think uh, back in EU, Overpow is a name you recognize when you say Kale or mm -hmm. back and forth either way. And when he gets going enough, he's the one that actually starts split pushing for the team. It would be a, an interesting matchup, Jax versus Kale. Right. Because Jax would really commit all in to Kale when he goes on her. And he would just have to pretty much wait through the intervention. But I think he even has enough survivability and damage that he would be able to solo shifter right now. So that's a very dangerous proposition. Let's see what Coast has prioritized for themselves. It's going to be Zion Spartan grabbing up the red buff to facilitate more of these fights. Once they get it, they don't want anybody on a curse getting away. Coming up on 20 minutes of the game, this is that part of the mid game where teams will usually lull, figuring out what to do. And they force each other into something. Quas is a great duelist right now. Who has the upper right hand now. on this? Quas does not have a red buff. Nintendo does, though. That's about... That's more than half its health, I should say. And just a few abilities. Zekant looks to follow up onto this. They're going to go ahead, clear out the pink ward, and start to gain control of Coast Jungle. Now, I think Quas doesn't have any boots, but when he does get boots, I'm pretty sure he should go for Mercury Treads to reduce that wither on him, uh, the duration of the wither, because 
Nasus had his range reduced for casting Wither. Right, yeah. And also the extended range from his ult was taken mm -hmm. off. So it actually was a really big nerf to the range. And he might not always be able to get in range to Wither Cop. So right. his go-to target is most likely going to be Quas. That's the thing uh, you know I was saying earlier is with so much mobility, it's going to be really hard to make something happen after using Wither. Because it's usually the ability you want so you can go in and kill someone. 2,000 gold in the lead for Curse. Not many core items finished out, but they are piecing together more, and it's making them powerful. Needlessly large rod onto Voiboy as he's starting to scale a little bit better into the game. The Triforce is finished onto Quas, and he's having a grand time in that top lane. Yeah, he's very happy with how the game is going, uh, considering his farm. The only hiccup was that Nintendo <laughs> unexpected <laughs> appearance that foiled his plans. His devious plans to take down Zion. You gotta do what you can. Get him when they feel the safest, and that's how they got the kill on him. Two kills mm -hmm. have come in for Curse. That was Dominates we saw previously, as well as Cop, when they went crazy in the bottom lane. And it's not something that Coast has revisited. They were like, we don't actually want to do that again. So they're adapting as well. They've gotten three kills for themselves due to that adaption. I mean, the thing that's... that's making Curse second-guess themselves, and mm -hmm. the reason we haven't seen Curse like siege up outside a turret and try and make use of that Ziggs and Lucian combo is they're worried about the hard engage from Vi, and they don't really, since they don't have the main tank, like they're they're a little bit hesitant since, since the option there to go all in is available for Coast. Right. So what they would want to do is just extend their lead with multiple dragons. They're waiting at the timer since they've been able to take it on cooldown. They know when it will spawn again, and they just want to get the global gold. Kind of the before, for sure way to, to keep yeah, yourself in the lead. Before they're really confident in the team fight because they have to actually play the team fight very well since they don't have a lot of meat, and they have to coordinate their CC and damage in order to beat this Coast team. Or slowly, like I said, they're just waiting on their scalers to get back up. A little bit of deja vu here with Zion Spartan going to split push. He's got his wards on himself as well as that trinket that just came up. So he can kind of recycle that and keep himself safer for longer than the minute. He's got to worry, though, um, because there's no ward coverage in the river. He just has one very deep ward at the blue buff. And Quas, as we, as we have seen, can easily solo him, especially now with those Merc Treads. We do see him moving down towards this. Two seconds right. until Dragon. Yeah. No. On cooldown. Oh, they sh oh they a little early. <laughs> Everybody's getting a little, a little happy on it. Good damage, though. And they start to move off of this because it's going to possibly be the Baron start. They will not have enough time to get it all the way down. Wait, the teleport's coming in. Zion's going to add a little bit. He uses the ultimate right away. Oh, good. Only there from Ziggs gets everyone in the stun. That's a lot of damage. Zion Spartan gets taken down. That's going to be... No, he lives. How is he still alive? Kills no. coming out everywhere. Zintendu is not able to get that Baron. Dominate comes in big time on that. Deja vu with a smite steal. My god, was that not the right call. Oh, god. Oh, uh, they... So they knew the plan just as we knew the plan. Yes, Curse is going to go for this Dragon on cooldown. So they're like, okay, if they go Dragon, we'll try and burst down this Baron. They don't get nearly as close. And if you're in Baron Pit versus a Ziggs and Annie, a lot of AoE magic coming out there. Definitely a huge win for Curse. That might even be uh, too much to come back from. That was devastating loss. That the call on that was so... I don't even know. Can't say anything. It was just the spur of the moment. Everybody's adrenaline must be rushing. And the communication was there from everybody on coast. So they were all into that. And they're going to try to get themselves out. Okay, so here goes the lob. That's just a, a very this smiley face. This is an extreme face. amount of Let's damage. Let's take, take a look at Nintendo there. He's the only one who doesn't get stunned. He's dead now. There's no smite. They're still doing Baron with no smite here. And they're up against Elise on top of that. I mean, they were kind of out of options at that point because they were about to get wrecked. Yeah. But still, they should turn and try and do like damage to the champions instead. Like, if you're going up against Elise with Smite and your jungler is dead, there was your chances of getting that Baron are almost nil. That was that was like a two thousand damage Mega Inferno bomb. It hit it, four people for five like five hundred damage. And then the get follow out. up from Zekent that stun Annie Tippers. Oh, get out. That's what they said. 25 minutes. The Baron has been taken down as Curse makes their way from objective to objective, making sure they got it checked off on their list.
Forty thousand gold was grabbed there. It's an exactly a six. It's exactly a six thousand gold lead now. Five to two in turrets. The map is being opened up. The gold lead is as well, which means that item differential is opened up as well. All right, two Trinity forces. One yeah. more, and uh, Freak shaves his nose hairs. <laughs> Tons of nose hairs. <laughs> That's going to actually help them now. They're, they get barren so quick. All these turrets are going to fall in seconds. They're going down pretty quickly here. And since uh, coasts are spread out, they're not really looking to defend the outer turrets. You can see um, teleport is not available. So we're going to have to have Nasus walk his way all the way down here before any sort of fight is going to pop off. Yeah, but we already went over how good this four-man squad of Curse is at sieging turrets because the range jungler and the massive amounts of wave clear all they have to do is let Ziggs get in there for every other auto attack. And then yep. a Lucian double shot empowered with Trinity Force? Forget about it. <laughs> Coming in on the turret. Good damage there. One bomb hitting both Nintendo and Daydream. They get him on the hook, but it's going to be Dominate. The culling goes through for full damage poke. It looks like Zion Spartan's going to be the first one to go down. Dominus stops that with intervention just for a little bit, but it's only so long, and it's going to be the inhibitor, Kobe. All right, two inhibitors down. They're going to march on Nexus towards here. Curse looking confident, and man, is Quas a beast right now. If anybody actually tried to fight him with those two items, Painful situation. Quas always works off the ball so well. Nintendo just kind of gets pushed around Whoa, before he goes help. down. Quas getting a little too close here. Comfort. There's two kills for Wiz Fusion, and it looks like they get a lockup on Zcat. A little bit antsy here for Curse, and they lose a few more than they wanted to. Getting excited is stopped by the minefield. They did go a little bit deep towards the turrets there, and it was a good job by yep. Coast sticking in the game and still trying to make the play. So first of all, Nintendo makes the call to go right in, and they bump all the damage dealers close to the turrets. The only drawback here of these full damage teams is that you have no really go-to target to take those turret hits. And pretty much everyone taking a lot of AoE damage there, going down in different sides, means that Jinx can get excited and chain kills. But the only really area where they can actually pull that kind of play off is deep in their base at yep. the turrets. So, right, right. Uh, Curse still have control of most of the map. As long as they put down some more wards very deep in this coast area, they'll be able to continually accrue more and more of a lead, just taking all of the resources on the map. Curse did a really good job this game of just holding safe and playing the lanes and not trying to overextend. They still have every single turret in mid, and that Void Boy held his lane while being pressured more than once. It seemed kind of like that strategy where you wait for your opponents to outplay themselves. Yeah. And um, when Coast did put themselves into a, a sticky situation, Curse did a great job of making it all the way from Dragon to Baron. I mean, that early in the game, it's hard to burn down Dragon. Or it's hard to burn down Baron. Yeah, yeah. In the time that it takes another team to do Dragon. So really, really rough for Coast right now. 34 seconds on Dragon, a minute and 50 on Baron, which means it has long worn off of Curse. They do not contain those buffs right now. There's that sound. That's gorgeous. Just listen. All right, there we go. He's going to get another turret for his team. 7 to 7 is the kills, but it's 8 to 2 in turrets, and that means you are just increasingly losing map vision. Just sounds like Quas is angry. <laughs> Look at me. However, he's very calm when we see his picture there. Absolutely. Damage As going he should on. Be. And the inhibitor. Good throw out by Wiz Fusion. He's still putting out damage with those zaps. He's still got some good damage under his belt. Right, but this time around, no turrets. So yeah. curse are free to poke away wow. and then just exit the scene of the crime. Those one two shots you were talking about from Cop, he is just laughing at these structures. He's also gone with pretty much the turret killing killing build right there. If you want to just take the double shot and back off like that, this is the massive amount of damage you coming You didn't even here. buy boots, too. Just flat, flat damage from Bloodthirster and Last Whisper added on. They don't give you boots, too, at the Academy, so he just stick with the, the first ones. Talisman of Ascension was used on Zcant, so they got to be careful on the escape of this. Oh, if hook, anything goes bad. down. That's a pretty big cooldown. Yeah. We got the minion. That's terrifying. I mean, Baron's, don't in, go in, on Baron's in 30 seconds, so they don't want to do anything chancy here and overextend. If you just put up the ward line, yeah, you can see the twerking. Rocking out. His fusion. He's, he's still having fun. Get the headbang going on. Um, like so they're, they're going to put up the ward line before Baron, and 
try and use their dual sweepers to clear it out. Two is not quite enough. You need to upgrade those into oracles if you really want to do a good job mm -hmm. of clearing it out, though. So it might come down to oh, another force. Oh, the loop de loop They're going to pull the loop. The loop alley-oop. But there's too many wards down now. They've been thwarted. I thought that Coast was going to want that right after Voidboy used his alt in middle. They're like, hey, this could be a good idea well, to fight. Well, this could be the opposite situation. <laughs> Since Coast are, or Curse oh, are putting dear. themselves inside the Baron pit, um, it's actually Coast that have the opportunity here. It's going down way too quick, though. Bam! Very nice. Quaz with the smite on the offside. He's able to get it. And it looks like they're going to pressure this one down the mid lane with Fusion running for his life, but they're running through a trail of wards. So Curse knows where to enter this base. Yeah, right through the front door. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they're actually going to go for that last one. The inhibitor on the bottom side is open for the taking. I think they're going to go straight for the Nexus turrets after this if it becomes a good fight, though. So they still can play this very calmly and Oof. just hate, wait for those one attacks from either Cop or, or Boy Man, Boy. Get this, cold. There's a lot, of, a lot of hooks coming out from this Thresh going, going with cooldown reduction here. That's a... Uh, that's something to keep in mind. You have to worry about that initiation. You miss 100% of the hooks you don't throw. So. If somebody, if, I mean, if one of them lands and you pull them under the turret, then you have an option to come well, back. Well, then you're golden. It's like an extra player on your team shooting giant cannonballs at someone. 32 minutes into this pink one. Pink lasers? Pink la well, pink lasers you, but then it shoots a ball. Oh! He got one. He got the spider. Back up the spout. Dominate goes, and they're going to be safe for this one. Getting a little bit of that tag. Poke. There it is. Oh, they go on to Boy Boy. He's got the he's got the ducky down. He is safe. The barrier is there as well. They have the ultimate back, and he gets the double kill on the Mega Inferno bomb. Going on to Shifter. The ignites there. The heal comes out. It's going to be enough. Doesn't make it to the fountain. He trips on his shoelaces. Scion Spartan's trying to make it home, and it's going to be him staying home. The Nexus turrets go down, and Curse comes up with a win in the rematch versus Coast. Congratulations to Curse.